Hello again. I'm sorry if I upset anybody or irritated them yesterday by talking about um, illegal immigrants. I think I mentioned that a lot of the problem stems from the structure of the European Union or the common market as it used to be called. I must confess at once that I was one of those fools who voted in the 1975 <laughs> referendum to remain in the common market or European Economic Community as it then was. I have two excuses for this. In the first place, I was much younger than I am now. And secondly, most people had no idea at all 45 years ago of the extent to which politicians at the time were lying to us. In 1973, when Britain joined the common market, there were just six member states. That's Belgium, France, Italy, Luxembourg, the Netherlands and West Germany. All prosperous West European countries. On January the 1st, 1973, Britain, Ireland and Denmark also joined. I remember vividly that the whole enterprise was simply represented to the British as no more than a way of reducing prices and doing away with bureaucracy. Which, considering the way that the European Union is now, the bit about bureaucracy is rather ironic. The idea was it would be easier to move about between those countries. Um, that's and also there would be no import and export tariffs on goods traded between those countries. So without those tariffs, goods would automatically become cheaper or, or so we were told. Also, if you wanted to go and live and work in Germany or France, you could. Just as Germans, Danes and Dutch people could come and live in Britain if they wanted. Few did so, of course, because of course the countries of Euro Europe, Western Europe in those days, had fairly high standards of living. There was no earthly reason for a million people to come trekking over here from Germany or Denmark. I might mention that even then, nearly 50 years ago, there were people who warned that the ultimate aim was to impose foreign laws on Britain and take control of the country from our elected representatives. These people were officially dismissed as lunatics and liars. The Prime Minister at the time was, of course, Edward Heath. In the same month that the country became a member of the EEC, which is now the European Union, Heath made a television broadcast in which he said, There are some in this country who fear that in going into Europe we shall in some way sacrifice independence and sovereignty. These fears, I need hardly say, are completely unjustified. This was a barefaced lie, and it has to be said that Heath knew he was lying when he said it. Still, although it became clear that there was no less bureaucracy, quite the opposite, and we really weren't any better off financially once we were in, there was no good reason really to come out again. The common market didn't really affect most of us very much. The reason was that people in Denmark, Holland, Germany, France, Belgium, Luxembourg, Britain, Ireland and so on, didn't feel any need to leave their own countries en masse and go and live in another of the common market countries. So things carried on just pretty much as they had been before. And this is where the bait and switch comes in. For those who don't know, bait and switch is a sales tactic used by companies and shops. And what happens is you advertise something at a phenomenally low price to lure people into your shop. And once they get there, you tell them that that particular bargain has gone, but that they can offer you something even better. Of course, what they're really going to do is rip you off for an inferior product at an inflated price. The whole aim of the original ludicrously low offer was to get you into the shop or to get you onto their website or get you to do business with their company. So, you're brought in on one pretext and then you persuade people to accept something they wouldn't even cross the street for if that had been the first thing that they saw. This is how Britain was lured into the common market. The country was offered one thing and then once we were in the shop the deal changed. In 2004 it changed in a catastrophic way 
But Britain was so deep in by that time that they accepted the new thing as well. It was a case like Macbeth, that the going backwards was as arduous as the going on. We were so deeply involved with Europe by 2004 that it really didn't seem to anybody that it was worth all the trouble of leaving. In that year, Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Slovakia, Slovenia, Hungary and Malta joined the European Union. Three years later, Romania and Bulgaria also became members. And the result must surely have been deliberately planned because millions of people from the poorer Eastern European countries began flocking to Britain. Why wouldn't they? We couldn't stop them. They were now members of the same union as us. Of course they would come here because wages were higher. They could get decent jobs. They could bring their families here. Or if they didn't want to, they could earn decent money here and send it back to Eastern Europe. Those of us who voted to remain in the common market in 1975 had not seen this coming. Although perhaps we were gullible for not getting what would happen. Now we have almost a million Poles, half a million Romanians, Lord knows how many Lithuanians, Slovaks, Hungarians and so on. The government might well have known what would happen in 2004 and 2007, but no provision was made for the arrival of millions of people. That is to say, no house building, new hospitals, schools and so on. All these new people were just crammed into existing spaces, causing huge problems for ordinary working people. They tended to be concentrated, of course, in the cheaper working class districts. Well-to-do people living in London, areas like Richmond or Kensington, sent their children to private schools and often had private medical care. So none of this would affect them. Well, the only effect it did have was that they suddenly had cleaners, builders and so on who they could employ for less money than the English workers. Result. The best bit about the whole game here was that having tricked people into endorsing the common market in 1975, those in power simply denounced anybody who later complained about having been deceived as a result as a fascist or racist. This was absolutely masterful. If you're losing your job to uh, cheap Eastern European labour and raise your voice about it, you're a racist. Worried because you can't get an appointment to see your doctor? What's wrong with you? You hate foreigners or something? You must be xenophobic or racist. I found this aspect of the thing the most entertaining of all, that the victims of such a sharp piece of trickery should end up being abused when they drew attention to what had been done to them. Remember how everybody voting leave for years was regarded by the BBC Guardian readers and every middle class person as being a thick headed neo-Nazi? Simply saying that you didn't want to see your country trashed and your laws made outside Britain was enough for you to be seen as being a blinkered idiot. This was absolutely priceless.